first issue that I want to put on the record, and as I touched on before lunch, uh, back with the deputy speaker back in now, was around the issues of the timber industry and the callous decision by the government to uh, just cut the timber industry with no forewarning and basically give them what is the equivalent to six months to find new jobs. Uh, it turned the lives upside down of not only timber workers uh, and their families, but also all those spin-off businesses, Deputy Speaker, that rely on the timber industry for income. So we find ourselves at a point in time, uh, months after this budget was delivered, where I've still got timber workers in my community, uh, mill workers, harvest and haulage contractors. I've still got people who weren't directly employed in the timber industry. These might be people like uh, the contractors who reseeded the coops, the people who own the tyre services in these towns that service the uh, timber industry trucks. Uh, we have one case of an electrician, and, and the bulk of his work was doing the electrical work within the mills. Here we are months later, and we've still got no information on the table as to what supports will be provided, uh, what new job opportunities will be provided, and it's left these communities in a great deal of limbo and causing an enormous amount of stress on a number of families, not only in my electorate, but in all the electorates around the state where the timber industry uh, is a key economic driver. Now, you would have thought that if you're going to basically scrap an entire industry, you would have had this stuff ready to announce to these families and these communities when you made that decision. But not only was that pertinent and relevant and important information not there when the decision was made, here we are months later and I've still got people who are affected by the closure of the timber industry uh, coming into my office and wanting to know what their job opportunities are going to be. Deputy Speaker, there's even staff members from Vic Forests. I was at the footy uh, a fortnight ago and I had two Vic Forest staff members. These are state government agency employees coming to me and saying, have you heard anything? Do you know if we're going to be offered other jobs within uh, the government departments? These are people who have got kids at school, they've got mortgages, and they do not know what their future holds, and it is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. The other issue that we've got, the other issue that we've got here, Deputy Speaker, is we've got a summer fire season again just around the corner. And in removing our timber industry, which is just the, the worst environmental decision you could ever make, uh, it's the only renewable building resource available in the world that grows back and stores carbon. Uh, so, you know, the International Panel on Climate Change tells us to, you know, we should be building everything with wood as the biggest mitigation measure. And what do we do in Victoria? We shut down our timber industry and we've got imports going up from countries with less oversight. Can someone on that side of the chamber just please explain to me how that is a good environmental outcome? When Planet Ark's slogan is, do the world some good, build it with wood, we closed down our native timber industry, one of the, one of the timber industries in jurisdictions around the world with the highest levels of oversight. And what's happened is we've got consumers buying more wood, because that's what we're telling them to do, and now we've got to import from countries with less oversight to meet that demand. It, it is just disgracefully uh, unenvironmentally friendly. But getting back to my point, uh, Deputy Speaker, before I was sidetracked, we've removed the first line of defence when fire hits. And in East Gippsland and in other electorates around the state, and the member for Narrakan there, we know, and we've even got, uh, Deputy Speaker, some people from the wonderful East Gippsland electorate in the gallery, and they well know, Deputy Speaker, they well know the fire risk in that electorate. It's not a case of if we're going to get fires, it's when. And I can tell you, Deputy Speaker, in my 13 years in this job and my years as the local newspaper editor before that, countless times I saw our timber industry at the forefront pushing fire breaks through flames, risking their lives to protect assets and protect the community. Now, this government's just got rid of that industry, but yet we have no word on the verge of another summer and uh, 
what is going to be done to replace that first response effort. Now, we heard some waffle at the time that these people were going to be re-employed in the department and there would still be that presence there as a first responder. But these harvest and haulage guys haven't heard nothing in that time. It is time this government came clean and made sure that they have the security to provide that important role they play in our communities.